The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth who forgives all the iniquities as well as the transgressions and the sins. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the second part of this message relating to the matriarch, Rebecca, the tablets, as well as the forgiveness that we can steward this time that will be able to bring about your restorative purposes and that we may be able to know that there's a kingdom to advance. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for this uh, time that we can spend together and following on from the first message of Rebecca, the tablets and forgiveness, we ask that we continue to keep looking at you and what you are doing during the season, going from the old to the new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, from the last message, we closed off on Joel chapter 2, speaking of the terrible visitation, as well as the Psalm of David, which speaks about the forgiveness in Psalms 103. Let's just uh, open up on that so we can get a bridge from the old and first message to the new and the second message. It's the praise of uh, the Lord's mercies. Blessed the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in with, within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, and who heals your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So we'll stop there because um, God's saving and healing benefits are giving us a hope and a future. And this is found in a kingdom dynamic part of that divine healing, which is uh, Holy Spirit led. This is a definite Old Testament promise of the bodily healing based upon the character of Yahweh, Jehovah Rapha, as our healer. It is clear that the dimension of the healing promised here is specifically to include the physical wholeness. But the text reinforces the healing covenant, since the Hebrew word for diseases, which is tachalu, uh, is from the same root shaula, which is the word for disease. In Ezekiel, which we've been covering, it also understands and appreciates the healing that's the same both in the passages, being rougher. But the distinct meaning involves the idea of mending or curing. And the two texts form part of a strong bond. And these two verses bear witnesses from the Old Testament that the, the Lord not only forgives the iniquities, He heals our diseases. If under the former covenant, bodily healing was pointedly included in the Father's many other benefits, and we can rejoice and rest in faith. But the new covenant glory exceeds everything from the Old Testament covenant as well as being certain that God in Christ has made it complete, a provision for the well-being of our total person. So with this uh, passage that we closed off on the first part of the message with this great kingdom dynamic about forgiveness, we're moving into the second part of this message. And it gives us a great opportunity to uh, render our hearts and not our garments, as we shared in the first message. And asking the Lord to search our hearts and ask Him to find anything that's inside of us that may need that forgiveness, whether it's for self or others. Because as we learned in the, in, in the first message, God is the God of redemption and restoration and also forgiveness. And um, His loving kindness and everlasting love is from everlasting to everlasting. With this said, it may bring about a new revelation in what we've been uh, speaking regarding the truth. And also what was spoken of in the Old Testament about the reign of Jesse's offspring. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be on the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. This is, 
This is the Spirit of the Lord that rests upon not only the Messiah, Jesus, but it's the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel as well as might, knowledge and also fear of the Lord. You know, there'll be no end to the increase of his governmental rule or even his peace on the throne of uh, the Davidic line that we're now exploring and appreciating through these beautiful testimonies of the matriarchs and patriarchs and generational Davidic lines in this case. But it's actually over his kingdom that we stand in awe and reverence. Because on this throne of David is over his kingdom and we do well to establish and uphold it uh, with justice, righteousness, and from then and forevermore. But it's the zeal of the Lord of hosts that will accomplish this. Not by power, not by might, but by His Holy Spirit. And also for His holy name's sake, as we're going to learn a little later on today. A little later on in Isaiah chapter 29, it goes on to speak about the the disciplines as well as the blessings that come from that and um, when we stand in trust uh, waiting for him to move redemptively it gives us a great opportunity to have that future recovery the future recovery of wisdom of maybe what was stolen before and also allowing it to be restored In that day the deaf shall hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The humble shall also increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. These are beautiful illustrations of how he will open up the deaf ears and the blind eyes, and being able to uh, hear and see gives us that opportunity to appreciate the doctrine of the kingdom, the God's word. One day Israel will see. And Lebanon, famous for its greatness of its trees, or symboli symbolizes the restoration and the fertility of, to earth as part of uh, God's understanding in our hearts and our minds and our spirits. I want to go to Psalms, uh, which is uh, something that will lead into near the end of this message. But it's important to hear this message here quickly so that we can set the tone for this beautiful opportunity. Talking about the reign of the Lord's anointed. The Messiah's triumph and his kingdom. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have forgotten you. Ask of me, and I will give to you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. And you shall break them with a rod of iron, and shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now the uh, Lord often speaks to us in, in ways that uh, will give us a bit of a heads up, hmm, a forewarning, maybe a prophecy through those that he sends as messengers of things to come even in the Old Testament. But as Gentile believers, uh, the potter's uh, way or the potter's vessel is uh, true to us because we've been grafted in. But it's also available for the Jews and those that are living in the land of Israel and also further afield all over the world because the gospel will be preached until the end comes. But going back to Isaiah, we can uh, really take hold of what the words were spoken so, so many years ago about the righteous reign of the branch of Jesse's offspring. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the young lion and the uh, fatling together. And the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, and the young one shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole. And the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. 
For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner to the people. For the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. What a beautiful operation of the Holy Spirit through the words that are written in Isaiah chapter 11 verses 6 to 10. The Gentiles, the Gentiles shall seek him and his resting place shall be glorious. So this brings us into the heart of the message because once there's a, a renewed life, restored mind, body and spirit, it gives us an opportunity to step into the new things that the Lord has, ha- that He wants to have for us. I want to read about something that you may or may not be aware of, may or may not have experienced, or may or may not be pressing into fully just yet. This is the new birth and its meaning. Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes may, uh, may in him have eternal life. You know, Moses lifted up that serpent for the sinful, disobedient people. Um, when anyone was always uh, bitten by a serpent, they have a choice. One of two. They can either humble themselves by a simple act of faith to be able to look and live, or to refuse to look on the serpent of the bronze and die. Now, just as the serpent in the wilderness was the only means for the healing of Israel, so the death of Jesus Christ is the only means that we may be able to have that new birth. There's a regenerating power that's available, and the only way that's appropriate is by faith alone. That's in the victorious uh, death, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. As I read that, I appreciate that there may be opportunities for healing, divine healing, divine forgiveness, uh, that allows us to uh, get rid of the blockages uh, that may be preventing us from having that direct relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the things that I was just reading through them, thinking about how the Israelites were journeying and built the calf and maybe were a little bit stubborn and on the way and, and also just having the forgiveness that Moses had on top of the mountain for that message please listen to the first part of this message because it does tie in beautifully with regards to the second message about the healing because we covered Rebecca the matriarch of um, you know the the, the wonderful woman that came into lives and and, uh, were were very impactful for generations as we learned through Abraham Isaac and Jacob and even Jacob's 12 sons but also how important it is for us to be able to know that the tablets that were once broken because of um, the rebellion and building the cars can be so easily applied to our lives, our brokenness of heart, of uh, whether it's betrayal, loss, grief, sickness, uh, disease, whatever it may be. God wants to restore that. And that can come through the forgiveness and the healing benefits that's available. So I just want to invite anybody who's maybe suffering with a couple of things, whether it's forgiveness, healing, disease, uh, loss, grief, betrayal, all these things, these are the things that holds are, are held precious by our Lord as I mentioned in the previous message we looked at you know the the the, the, the account of Rebecca the second matriarch as well as the second temp, uh, tablets uh, that were um, written by the hand of God by the touch of God and actually then was also uh, talking about this beautiful marriage and uh, covenantal relationship brides and weddings and um, life through the birth physically and spiritually but also including the prophecies and uh, the inheritances that are available as well as the promises that are secured in Jesus in in him his promises are yes and amen and we just need to allow the um, opportunity to walk in that freedom now if that freedom looks like waiting for a um, opportunity to heal from something or forgiveness or even just taking another step for the kingdom of God. It's just something that he values eternally, and he's watching from heaven, just like the rest of the angels are. But, you know, looking at something that happened at Mount Sinai versus what's going to happen at Mount Zion, with the generations from Abraham right through to his return, the Davidic line, we can now view this from that telescopic lens 
that um, was similar to what Micah was um, prophesying and also what Jesus was foretelling in the accounts and also available for us to do as we do the Father's business. The account of uh, Micah spoken of in the last message is just a reflection on what the Lord wants to do in and through um, his people and one of the warnings and one of the messages was actually this is that Israel's had a, a love for you know for God the burden of the wo word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi was spoken like this I've loved you says the Lord yet you say in what way have you loved us was not Esau Jacob's brother says the Lord but Jacob I have lost and but Esau I hated and laid waste the mountains and his heritage for the jackals of the wilderness and even though Edom has said we have been impoverished but we will return and build the desolate places thus says the Lord God of hosts they may build but I will throw it down and they shall be called territories of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord will have indignation forever your eyes shall see and you shall say the Lord is magnified beyond the borders of Israel then it goes in to talk about the polluted offering, but more importantly, what it says at the end, just before the, the closing of the Old Testament. Remembering the law of Moses, my servant, which I command in Herod for all of Israel, with the statutes and the judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with, earth with a curse. You know, we go. We live in a world that there's uh, lots of disruption, separation, uh, divorce. There's there's so many things going on in this world at the moment, because of the fall of man. And um, God, in His loving, caring uh, nature, wants to redeem and restore that situation, whatever it may be: health, relation, spiritual, emotional, material. But we do well to start realizing that we are not of this world. We are part of this world, but we come from a different kingdom. And when we operate from a different kingdom, we can see things differently than what we may have used to before ourselves, before coming back into relationship with Jesus. Through his Father and the Holy Spirit. Well, not through his Father, to his Father. Through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. You know, I was just reflecting on how the God works, uh, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and how Jesus, as he fulfilled his promise when he said, I'll send another comforter. And the beautiful signs and wonders and miracles and just testimonies that are just too many to count. It's that great day of God that he is coming back for his bride. But even so in the Old Testament, we can also reflect on the goodness of God through the word that he spoke, even through the prophets, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Malachi. So here's the thing. The first message we spoke about those tablets that were broken and then rewritten by the hand of God and that, that was carried in the ark. I want you to think of um, the spiritual sense of our hearts and take this context into a broader meaning now that we're starting to tabernacle with him and him with us and abiding in him and him with us. Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 24 to 28 it says, For I will take you from amongst the nations and gather you out of all the countries and bring you into your own land then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols and I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you and I will take the heart of stone out your flesh and give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them and then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. You know, the pictures of the stones here uh, that were smashed through the disobedience by the Israelites on the way through the um, wilderness were now carried in the ark because they were forgiven, and the second tablet was, um, was written even through their mediator being Moses because they were too scared to speak to God themselves thinking that he was going to kill them. This is the relational intimacy that we need to reestablish and be restored to our Heavenly Father so that we can see for ourselves that he's a good, good Father and he wants the best for us. And even his presence with the ark and with the manna and with the rod continued with the ark even into the promised land. Even when Joshua crossed over that uh, Jordan River 
fulfilling the promise that God promised with the new generations being uh, risen, how they walked on the dry ground and as they did through the Red Sea. God is bringing that restoration in our lives. Not because of the merits or maybe even the, 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 the attempts of the exiles or us being born again, but for His holy name's sake. Because the restoration will vindicate God because He's not powerless. He's holy and He's righteous. But that sprinkling of the clean water is something beautiful to experience and also to um, take from the old and bring into the new. It's that cleansing of the uncleans. That's that first step of the inward renewal for restoration. The second would be that uh, new spirit and the new heart. But also the human. In its wholeness. The whole inner life will be transformed and in involved in that renewal process. With a new will and a new heart and a new attitude of spirit that will enable each and every single one of us to be able to walk with God. Abide in Him and He will abide in us. You know that Ezekiel's prophecy is part messianic? Because he visualized this restoration, not only of the land itself, but also what it will bring. In Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 30 it says, And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and the increase of your fields, so that you need never again bear the reproach of the famine amongst the nations. We see that we, we're living in times that may not be presenting itself, but we hold on to the promise through faith, just like they had to do while they were traveling through the wilderness. But these teachings with biblical principles that God brings material blessings to the people who acknowledge Him is also available. So let's read that again. Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 24 to 26. And I will take you from amongst the nations and gather you out of all the countries and bring you into your own land. And then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you and I'll take out the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. You know, this new heart will be pliable, it will be teachable, um, the opposite of a, a, a stony heart, which happened when they were building the calf and the first set of stones were, were broken. But I want, I'd, I'd ask you to think about these stones as our heart, because he says he'll write it on our hearts. It's that new spiritual transformation that's necessary in that second step, in its uh, renewal. Because it's a fact and it's truth. Because God loves you. And He wants you back with Him. No matter how far you've strayed, no matter how lukewarm you may be, we know that God's plans are always good for us. Because it's an eternity that awaits Early on we spoke about John chapter 3 verses uh, 14 and 15 where it says, And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And then it goes on in verses 16 to 17, which we can now start appreciating the love of the Father. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved that's eternal that's eternal and with his love being everlasting that cannot be fathomed because it's too large for us to understand going beyond the boundaries of our comprehension can only be known by faith For God so loved. It's a tiny little word, so. But look at the impact that it has. Give some sort of idea on the magnitude of God's love for us. Word wealth, love, Strong's Accordance, number 25. Unconditional love. Love by choice and by an act of the will. 
The word denotes unconquerable benevolence and undefeatable goodwill. Agapeo will never seek anything but the highest good for fellow mankind. And agapeo, the verb, and agape, the noun, are the words for God's unconditional love. It doesn't need a chemistry, an affinity, or a feeling. Agapeo is a word that is exclusively belonging to the Christian community, the New Testament believers, because it's a love virtually unknown outside uh, the written context of the, the New Testament. So when we're going through this process of um, renewal, uh, which is an ongoing thing, sometimes the deliverance will happen over a lifetime. And every time we get close with the Lord, He'll remind us of something that maybe we haven't really um, let go of or forgiven or healed from. Just as the accounts of Rebecca and how that uh, blessed them, but also gave them some challenges during their uh, family line. It gives us an opportunity to find that beautiful forgiveness and unconditional love that God manifested through His Son Jesus Christ for us to 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 take hold of. Because you know, no one's seen God, but when they wanted someone to speak on behalf of God, they were just then appreciating that there was that mediator, the intermediary. But in the New Testament, which we're going to get to a little bit uh, in a while, because I spoke of just now, well, in the first part of this message, about um, uh, Joel and his prophecy. And maybe it's important to talk about now, because there's such a revelation that may be able to be um, manifested and applied and seen how God is actually going to apply these things in our lives. I spoke of um, Joel chapter 2 verses 12 through to, um, through to 17 in the last message. And it was that call to repentance bringing us back into relationship with God. And through this account of the Old Testament prophecy came something beautiful afterwards, which, which is the refreshing of the land. Now let's have a look at that in terms of our own walk with our Lord. And how does He want us to be um, refreshed? just like the land would be refreshed. We can do well to take prayer seriously and help people in this matter. When Joel was called to prophesy, the people were in sore defeat, famine and despair with no vision at all, not even for prayer. His sounding of the trumpet call to a sacred assembly opens to a prayer mobilization. And when he does this by reviewing the condition of uh, helping the people conclude that they had no other resource but to pray. And apart from this divine intervention, they were finished. They were, they were doomed. But by showing the people the pathway to prayer and fasting with humility, but also declaring the promises of God if they would pray. The great message of um, these verses that uh, we're going to lead into now in the Old Testament, then going through to the New, gives us the birthing of the church and the empowering of the Holy Spirit to form a spiritual, empowering, praying, ministering people. And His enablement will help us and help others to pray with the same promise today, whatever the desperation of the circumstances. Because He says, quite clearly, Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servant and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. God wants to put a dream back in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, but let it be done through the Holy Spirit's regeneration work. Dreams are wonderful things. Visions are great because it helps us align with kingdom values, kingdom principles, and kingdom purposes. A dream, a vision, is maybe in the night, and the root of this noun is the verb shalom, which is to dream. Dreams of various types are, are mentioned in Scripture, ranging from the product of one's imagination to the vehicle of God's communication with the person. Many biblical figures such as Jacob, Laban, Pharaoh, Solomon, Nebuchadnezzar, are known for having dreams, and Joseph and Daniel are the biblical champions of dream revelation. Each not only received his own dreams, but also interpreted the dreams of others as well. 
So there's a universal pouring, outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's available even through Joel in the Old Testament, but we'll get to the New Testament in Acts chapter 2. But this is one of the texts that uses Peter's Pentecost message in Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Upon the outpouring of the Spirit on the upper room, Peter declares the transcendent, multi-generational, gender-inclusive, supernatural experience, breaking all cultural exclusivity, gender base. A bias, age restriction, and prophecy awakens God's people to the larger purpose He has of reaching to the world around us through all who would be available to the work of His Holy Spirit. The result of this will be the salvation of those who would call upon the name of the Lord as they witness God's Spirit at work in His people. So then we go to Acts chapter 2, where Peter's sermon just brought in amazing fruit in the kingdom and sometimes that amazing fruit is seen and maybe unseen we we yet just do what the father has called us to do but peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice and said to them men of judea and all who dwell in jerusalem let this be known to you and heed my words for there are these are not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day but this is what was spoken by the prophet joel And it shall come to pass in the last days, says the Lord, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Capital A, capital L, capital L. Even the helicopter. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my Spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will show them wonders in heaven and above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord, as prophesied by Micah. And it shall pass, as it shall come to pass, that whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then it goes on to say, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined purpose for the foreknowledge of God. You have taken by lawless hands and have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David said concerning him, For I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, and you have put me, put me full of joy in your presence. This is the speaking freely of Peter to the brethren of God. It's sworn that would allow the patriarch David, also the dead and buried, speaking to generations gone, current and future. So when we appreciate these teachings, where being exalted to the right hand of God is where Jesus is, having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit which is available to you and me. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. And I'll let you continue reading about the work of the Holy Spirit through this beautiful account. Because the promise is available to you and your household and your children, to all who are far off, as many as the Lord God will call. So there's a strong call for us to be reconciled to God. And when we are, we are then restored to Him body, mind and spirit. So where are we in our journey, um, considering the messages that we've been sharing over the last uh, two messages and more, because it's an ongoing process. It's like going through the, you know, getting delivered from the first baptism, 
going through the wilderness, through the second baptism, through the Jordan River, and then also the third baptism, which is, you know, the Holy Spirit falling upon as it did with Jesus. There will be that renewal, not only of Israel, but in our lives too, and it gives us the opportunity to take what it says in Scripture and believe it with our heart, our mind, and our spirit. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things, all things have become new. This reflects back to Isaiah's prophecy in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 19. And let's just go back there quickly so that we can just uh, see what it says, which we've spoken of. And maybe the Lord is just re-highlighting these truths for us to be able to walk in them. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, and you shall, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness, and the rivers in the desert. But what does new mean? The Strong's Accordance uh, 2537 word wealth is new, unused, fresh, novel. The word means new in regard to form or quality rather than new in reference to time, a thought conveyed by Neos. So with this love and this new birth, having the opportunity to come into the kingdom, reflecting on what it says in Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 and 19, let's just ask the Lord to give us that new heart and to sprinkle that water on us and give us life in abundance through Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this account of um, the healing ministry through forgiveness. Forgiveness of disease, loss, betrayal, grief. Lord, we ask that all those things that have uh, been lost, you, you say in your word, you'll restore it. So we just ask for the healing touch of your Holy Spirit to restore those back to full health. So they may be able to be not only reconciled to you, but walk in the fullness that you have for them. We love you, we praise your name, and we continue this message giving honor to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name. He's our foundation. You know, reconciliation is the process by which God and man are brought together again. This is made possible through the blood of Jesus Christ and um, that demonstrates the power and the model of reconciliation. We were once estranged from Him, but now we've been brought closer to God and restored to relationship through the shed blood of Jesus Christ with Him. And His power, His power is fueled in us through the body of Christ and His flesh and His death. As children of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, we are enjoined to follow the standard He left for us to do. To be reconciled to God and with each other as He reconciles us to God. As we model His ministry of reconciliation, the world will be impacted. It just reminds me of just the efforts in the flesh that uh, I was once trying to do to bring about that restoration process, realizing that there's nothing I can do to bring about the restoration of someone to the Lord God Almighty, but it has to come from Him above, directly with them, so that they may be able to be filled with the Holy Spirit and also have that revelation for themselves. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. For he, for he has made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And that reconciling love uh, is an opportunity to lead in these um, areas. And today's leader faces the unique challenge of the 21st century pluralistic culture. To emulate Christ in his earthly ministry means to go out, uh, go about doing the Father's business, as we shared during the week. The business of reconciliation is the Father's business and that cross-cultural ministry of the Apostle Paul models that reconciliation as an essential part of the leader's life. 
In the light of this text, let each leader examine the extensive kingdom dynamic material elaborated under the themes of reconciliation and unity. You know, Paul's most characteristic expression is mentioned here for what it means to be a believer in Christ. It's by his death, his um, death on the cross, his resurrection to life that he did for us. And our identification with Him in faith alone gives us that opportunity to allow the Holy Spirit to come and minister to not only us, but through us. That makes that existence of that new creation possible, which then is the fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. You know, at present, this new creation is only partially experienced through water and Holy Spirit baptism, uh, that third baptism. It's also to be our focus on the completion of that life creation and being, assur being assured. Because our relationship with our Lord God Almighty, His Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit has such a, an impact on every aspect of our life. From conception to birth to life. Until we go home to be with the Lord with the birth of um, the Holy Spirit. The new birth, the second birth, as it was shared with Nicodemus. You know that the ministry and the spirit of reconciliation is to announce that there is a message of um, what God wants to do in and through Christ as he did and through us, providing that atonement for the sin that uh, may have plagued us. And those who are already reconciled have the great honor and opportunity, as well as the commission, to bring the message to others that will help them in their walk and their journey with the Lord. So let's read again. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. You know, God doesn't impute the trespasses that uh, we took once before. He doesn't, he doesn't hold it against us. As far as the east is from the west, we've been forgiven. He binds up the brokenhearted and heals their wounds. And we can, we can take reflection on the accounts of Scripture that remind us of these beautiful, forgiving moments. As well as the promise that was provided so much later, and even in our lives, you know, the atonement for the sin through the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Remember Abraham and Isaac and how he took him up and uh, uh, an alternative sacrifice was given. The ram caught in the thicket and uh, the horn became its spiritual um, sound. Also remember how God parted the Red Sea for those um, Israelites that were coming out of bondage, slavery, oppression through the leadership of Moses standing at the edge of that Red Sea until the sea was parted. Even forgiving the people for what they built while Moses was talking with God. Remembering the second tablets and how they were carried in the ark and crossed the Jordan River under the leadership of uh, Joshua, be strong and courageous from with you wherever you go. It's those sea, the, 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 sea of, uh, the, the sea of reeds, allowing the spirits of God to be restored, to be risen in faith. Now standing in Isaiah's prophecy with the government of the promised son, as it is promised, and how Ezekiel's prophecies with uh, the recovering and the restoring and the removing of the heart of stone to the heart of flesh, sprinkling that clean water on you, becoming clean. This gives a new dynamic in terms of the baptism in the Holy Spirit and water. Even our Jesus, the sinless one, came and asked John to baptize him in the Jordan River, allowing for that new birth. And again, how Jesus spoke tenderly and lovingly to Nicodemus, who came to him at night time, saying, What does one need to do to be born again? You're forgiven. No matter what has happened in the past, picture it now, just been thrown, thrown into the depths of the sea. 
and the Lord saying, as far as the east is from the west, you are forgiven. So whatever has happened in your life, your family's life, or anyone else's life, allow the Lord to work in and through that, that redemptive process and giving Him the glory all the same. And as we pick up the cross and follow Christ, we can understand that um, He will reward each one according to their works. Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. And then a little later on in Matthew chapter 17, verses 5, it says, While He was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed, overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear Him. And even when the disciples heard it, they fell in their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched, touched them and said, Arise, arise and do not be afraid. It's a great opportunity to see the inner bond between the Son of God and His Father. And that heavenly voice that speaks the combined words of Psalms chapter 2 verses 7 that we spoke of earlier. Let's go back there that we can then just uh, close this message off in terms of the promise that was given and will be fulfilled. And I will declare in the decree, the Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. There's that restoration plan of the Messiah's triumph and also his kingdom. This is the way in which God addressed his servant, in whom he delights and upon whom he has put his Holy Spirit. And that's available for you and me. But through this regeneration works of the Son of God, it will always allow the ministry of the servant, the servant of God, to have power through the Holy Spirit to do the father to do the father's business so as we close off the second message i just want to encourage you to continue pressing in continue going through those stages of the baptisms whether it's slavery oppression bondage maybe unforgiveness being delivered through that first baptism of uh, the red sea going into the wilderness learning how to keep him number one learning the lessons as they did in the wilderness and getting their hearts ready for the new land that they were going to be going into. Also the promise of the Lord that He gave them. Or maybe the third baptism where you've done the journey. Now you've either already been baptized with water and Holy Spirit or you want to be baptized with water and Holy Spirit. And I want to encourage you. Have the opportunity to find somebody in leadership and eldership at a church and go through that experience because it's that triple baptism that will be beautifully honored and appreciated not only by the Lord God Almighty but by all his saints. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, Lord, and this second message of Rebecca, the tablets, and also the forgiveness. Lord, as you are rewriting the tablets on our hearts, taking it from the heart of stone into the heart of flesh, I ask that the supernatural healing power of the Holy Spirit will bring about the restorative plan that you have ordained and redeemed and are busy restoring in our lives, Lord. Help us have that spirit of Joshua and Caleb, being strong and courageous, for the Lord God is with us wherever we go. And I part that truth to everyone who hears this message as they enter new realms and dimensions in your love and care heal the sick Lord set the captives free bind the broken hearted heal their wounds as we continue the journey we just love you we thank you we praise your holy name and uh, Lord not by power not by might but by your Holy Spirit we thank you for all the things that are coming to pass. And also your kingdom that's coming to rule and reign. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Sending you love and uh, we'll speak to you, we'll see you tomorrow, being Wednesday, for our next Kingdom Dynamic message. Sending love.